execute that plan. Most of these other crews out here wouldn't even be able to physically do that. They would die out as the race went on. For the Dragons to pull that off was simply amazing. To hold a 37 stroke a minute rating the entire race for an end, that was unbelievable. Well we'll, well, we'll probably see that for the men's varsity eight, but that's, uh, that is definitely not common in, in, a, in, a, in a blistering uh, a crosswind for, for women's eights. That's just, it, it is almost unheard of. And right now we are watching the men's. JV heavyweight eight final. Top of the screen, St. Joe's lane six, lane five, Drexel, lane four, Virginia, lane three, Michigan, lane two, Grand Valley, lane one, Temple. Well, Virginia won this event last year. The Wahoos, they they had a terrific race again. We were we were mentioning uh, uh, Frank uh, uh, Biller uh, earlier on. Uh, it's a club program that they uh, that they. Uh, you know the the team that everybody play it pays uh, pays money into the program. Then they go out and raise money for equipment. They go and raise money to pay the coach, and it, they just have a uh, a terrific system in place. And everybody is motivated to win. Everybody is motivated to to do their best. Michigan Temple St. Joe's rounding out the pack so far, Renee. Yes, and we have three local crews in this race today. We have Drexel, St. Joe's, and Temple, and. Having those three crews, it, it brings me back to when I was racing, and these crews duel together all year. They know probably each other's race plan. Um, you know, it, it, the local crews are going to be looking to, you know, push these outside competitors out of the field. And we got uh, Michigan at 38 strokes a minute um, uh, trying to, to, to lead to the bridge, try to get that, uh, that advantage of the turn, and just trying to set the pace for this, uh, for this race. But it appears uh, looks Drexel on the outside also a, a very fast. They've had some very, very fast racing this year and, and have done very well for themselves. Do you strategically, Renee, having rode at the Dadvale Regatta back in your days at St. Joe's, do you strategically look at certain points? I know it's broken up into four 500-meter segments. But do you look at that Strawberry Mansion Bridge and say, you know what, let us get there. Let's see where we are, and then we determine what we do from there. Yeah, that's that's a very, uh, in Philadelphia, that is definitely one of the places that crews look to move. Um, when I was racing here, I always felt like we were going to do a little mini push through the bridge because when you come under the bridge, you kind of lose uh, a feeling because you don't, you're not next to other crews anymore. So you go under there, and when you come out, it's kind of like, well, where is everyone? So whenever I went under that bridge, I was thinking, I want to get a little push. I want to come out a little bit more, a little bit further ahead than everyone else when I get to the other side. And, and Michigan, if we, if we, we discussed a port and starboard earlier, but Michigan with what, what the, you would refer to as a, a bucket rig in the center of their boat. So typically it's one side is port, you know, bow seat is starboard, uh, two seat is port, starboard port, starboard port. And uh, they, what they have is they have two rowers, so and they start off at starboard, and then port, starboard, starboard, and, and then port. And for the viewers at home who are tuning in and learning about rowing for the first time, starboard is when the boat steers away from our screen. Is that correct? Yeah. And port would be when the boat is steering closer to our screen. That, that's right. If we if we see our, uh, our the Wolverines right here on the left-hand side of the screen, we see their uh, their blades. That would be the starboard side. On the inside here, closer to us, on the right side of the screen, would be the port side. And you can actually kind of see, it kind of looks a little, kind of looks a little weird. Do you see the, the two blades there uh, closer to each other? The blades themselves, everybody has a different uh, pattern of painting the blades. It's kind of like your uniform in, uh, or, or your, uh, you know, your helmets or something like that in football. And uh, the Wolverines there with the blue blades and the, uh, and the, the yellow tips out there. Yeah, and we would expect Michigan to look strong. I mean, you know, I, I'm not particularly a fan of the bucket rig. I think it's weird. I, I'm a classic person myself when it comes to rowing. Um, but you know, Michigan's a strong crew. They've put out a lot of. Uh, Olympic rowers. Um, last Olympic cycle in 2008, Matt Hughes came from Michigan. Uh, he was in the men's United States quad in the Beijing Olympics, and they've consistently been a strong crew. So if they've got a bucket in their boat, they obviously know what they're doing, and they're leading this race right now. Ferdinand, big blue, coming up big. <laughs> coming up big and, and leading the way home. Uh, it doesn't look like the Wahoos can get back on terms. The uh, the Wolverines look very, very strong. They don't, uh, they don't recruit. Essentially, every one of their athletes is is a walk-on, meaning they start rowing their freshman year. 
they get uh, they get involved in the intrinsic nature of the sport their freshman year of college um, and they have uh, I think the uh, the average GPA as well of uh, the, uh, the Wolverines is something like the 3.73 of, of the entire team it's a very uh, very smart students uh, very good athletes and uh, it's it's pretty easy to coach athletes that are that intelligent because that they can listen to you and so far they are rowing an intelligent race Renee they are they are out in front they are unchallenged um, they, they look uh, to have less swing in this boat I mean they just look smooth they yep. do they, they look, look smooth swing. yeah they do um, and it, it's funny you know every crew has its own style and watching these Michigan rowers they, they look like other Michigan rowers I've seen come out of this school um, they are dominating this race they and have then, open water and, and it looks like the uh, the race is shaping up here for silver and bronze uh, Grand Valley on the inside in, in the uh, the electric blue colored uh, uniforms just overtaking the uh, the Cavaliers out there in lane four University of Virginia for the uh, silver and bronze positions but uh, Grand Valley looking very very strong coached by John Van Cherry uh, formerly of Marietta looking very very sharp and if Michigan can look that strong as a JV Renee that's a strong program. Yeah, they have a very strong program there. That, that was a very, very strong race. They, were, as well, were rowing quite high at 38, 37, 38 through most of the race. Um, and and they, are, they are extremely excited. You can see they're excited here. They're, they're, they're tangled up with another crew. Now, now we said before, uh, uh, this is the men's heavyweight eight, and we were discussing the difference between lightweights and heavyweights. But look at stroke seat closest to us on the left-hand side of the screen next to the coxswain. He doesn't look like he's much more than 175 pounds, but if he's got the, the technique, if he's got the rhythm, he's easy to follow, and he's dependable, that's where you stick that guy, regardless of his strength. And think about the team depth to have this strong a JV squad. The Michigan Wolverines, JV heavyweight eight champs here at the 2012 Aberdeen Dad Bell Regatta presented by Coca-Cola. We'll be right back with more.